everyone and welcome to X-Plane 11, or more precisely, X-Plane 11's Plane Maker. This is how you make planes for X-Plane 11. It's a built-in system that can be accessed if you have it through Steam, it's Launch Game Editor. Otherwise, you can just click on planemaker.exe in the X-Plane 11 folder. And it makes the physical model, what the physics is based on, for the plane. Uh, now, of course, if you really wanted to make it look spiffy, you should probably use a 3D modeling program and that's because the way that you make the fuselage is like this and it's just not as precise or nice uh, like something like Blender for instance. So I would definitely want to make the actual visual model in Blender but this has all the details, the wings, you know, wing configurations, flaps. Thankfully you don't have to animate the flaps, uh, well at least with this model. Of course in Blender you'll have to probably, but uh, here you can see the flaps there. I haven't actually made a Blender model for uh, X-Plane 11 plane yet, so I'm going to discover that separately. Uh, but we have uh, different wing segments, so you can see wing 1 is that part there that's highlighted in black, and then a wing 2 and a wing 3, like so, and it automatically symmetrizes it. And, you know, you can make the engine nacelles the, the same way that you make the fuselage. So that's made like this and they are shaped like that though. They're definitely not looking quite like they ought to. But again, I'll make the actual visual model in Blender at a later time. You can pick how many blades the propellers have. And in this case, this is a Beechcraft Starship. And the Beechcraft Starship has many in innovative features that didn't quite work out. It's an interesting plane. It used to be a staple in Microsoft Flight Sim um, until it uh, diminished in popularity because, again, it didn't quite work out. But it was the vision of the future from Bert Rutan for a while. And it had five bladed propellers and, uh, of course, the canard. The canard actually, I can't implement it here right now, but the canard actually uh, was a swing wing. It actually, it went straight and then it went, uh, it, it added sweep. So it was variable geometry, interesting things. And uh, the wheels are also automatically automated. Once you make your landing gear, you can decide how to extend them and retract them. This isn't really a tutorial on how to use this. This is showing you that it's possible. You can check mark retracts and indicate the retraction angle and the direction. And uh, yeah, uh, the exact length of the strut. It's a little bit more flexible than doing it in a Kerbal Space Program, honestly. But uh, yeah, still, uh, it, it doesn't look too bad, to be honest. And you could, in theory, make the textures for it. You can see reload textures and output texture map starting points. That'll basically do the UV unwrap for you. So you can use that to UV unwrap your model and it'll produce a texture file and then you can paint the texture file and have it all painted up. So, and you can generate an OBJ, which can, you can load in a different program like Blender, for instance, and sort of build around it or something like that. The question I have here is, how does it fly? I've sort of tried to adjust the center of gravity. It doesn't really show you the center of lift like Kerbal Space Program would. And, uh, but, you know, the center of lift is around where the landing gear is. <laughs> uh, the center of mass has to be forward of the landing gear, just forward of the landing gear. So a little bit of tweaking may be necessary, and we can figure that out by just bringing it into the simulator and seeing how it flies. Uh, but it gives you a whole lot of information. The CG check shows you how it varies as you change the amount of passengers and cargo and fuel. So right now it's indicating this little green dot here is when it doesn't have any fuel. If you load it up with fuel in both tanks, um, it goes to that green dot there. And then we could have no passengers and it goes down there and it shows you the CG location like that. So lots of interesting features. You can do a lot here and you could just make a plane in here. Uh, the cockpit is, here's a 2D panel. I've just put these two uh, multi-purpose displays here and you could start trying to configure a 3D panel here but I have not learned to do that. There are better tutorials on the 
on YouTube for how to actually make a plane like this. And I'll try and put a link in the video description for one of them, which I've been using. It's a little bit dated. It's from an earlier version of X-Plane, but uh, it seems to work pretty well. And yeah, so this is the plane. Uh, let's see how it flies in X-Plane 11. Okay, so you can see Starship here. It doesn't have a little icon yet. Uh, we could generate an icon or uh, create one. Just a little JPEG in the folder would do. And uh, we've got the weight and balance stuff. We could adjust the internal fuel, of course, but watch out for the maximum weight. And then there's this shiftable weight that we can reduce. That's the passengers and cargo. Um, the payload weight should just be zeroed out, I guess. And we could adjust the center of gravity here, but we won't. So yeah, you see the flight time based on the normal cruise consumption. And uh, I'll pick it up from where I had been flying before. And let's see how it is. Again, it's not going to be a looker. And it's not going to have a virtual cockpit yet. That's, that's got to take some doing. I expect that the most time consuming thing will be making a virtual cockpit. Honestly, making this model uh, in here did not take much longer than uh, just actually making uh, aircraft a space program with procedural parts, uh, much less a blender model. The blender model will take longer than what I have here. Okay, so of course we don't have a virtual cockpit. And this is what it looks like in the simulator. You can see the propellers spinning, as they should. I've not painted anything. The nose looks a little bit iffy. But altogether, you could probably do a pretty good job with it. And if you took your time. Uh, let's see how it flies. Of course, I got the engine stats right at least. Now, the you have to tell it how far... It's just like Kerbal Space Program as far as uh, how many degrees you want the control surfaces to tilt, for instance. The control, control surfaces are attached to the airfoils, so in that respect it's sort of easier. Uh, they're not a separate part, unlike uh, in Kerbal Space Program. The balance, uh, it, I, I let go of the stick there and it started nosing down, so it seems a little bit nose heavy. There we go again. But I haven't trimmed it at all. Let me try and do some elevator trimming and see if we can level it out. But I always wanted a Beechcraft Starship in one of these. Been a long time since I flew one, but it was an old favorite from the early flight sims. Ah, oh, lots of clouds. It has a tendency to roll to the right. I made the propellers counter-rotating. Uh, maybe that wasn't the right strategy, I don't know. I don't know if they were counter-rotating or not. So obviously I had uh, been working on making planes in Kerbal Space Program like the XB-70 and the Rutan Boomerang. And I decided to upgrade my skills and try and make one for X-Plane 11. So far, uh, so good I guess. Using some aileron trim, it still wants to roll to the right though. So, there's a lot of things that I don't quite understand yet. It still wants to nose down too. So far from perfect. I don't know how finicky a plane it really was. They had to do some weird aerodynamic stuff like the variable geometry canard. I hope that for the new Microsoft Flight Sim that they have something like this to make it easy to develop planes for it. That's obviously been a big part of the community for Flight Sim the whole time. But we'll see. I haven't heard much about that yet. I'm trying to let go of the stick and all. I think I've got it trimmed out now. It looks pretty, pretty good. Let's see what the trim actually is. This is the one other good thing about uh, x 11 is that if you do decide to make a plane in it, uh, you can have a lot of information. So what I want is the trims, <laughs> if I can find them in all of this. Okay, speed, gear brakes. Oh, trim. I'm blind. So we've got 
whatever 0.7 elevator trim. I suppose that must run it from uh, 0 to 1, so we're using quite a lot of elevator trim. Assuming that 1 is the max on it. And we're using about 20% of our, our aileron trim too. Wow, there's a lot of clouds today. There's supposed to be Bombay underneath there. Somewhere. Okay, now we're going down, so... Yeah, that's a lot of elevator trim to need, so probably we're still nose heavy and I need to move the COM back. But anyway, this was just a brief video detailing my first foray into making a plane for X-Plane 11 and hopefully encouraging more people to do so because uh, especially if you already have the game obviously because um, there's a added bit of fun to that dimension just as there is in Kerbal Space Program when you make planes so but this is a simulator there are fiddlier bits and more possibilities. You can finally tune exactly how much engine power you have, which is a little bit more difficult in Kerbal Space Program. In a way, it's sort of easier to get the plane that you want, which is nice. Visually though, that's a little bit more difficult in terms of uh, getting the textures done and making it look good. That takes artistic talent. But anyway, I'll work on that and we'll see if I can get a serviceable Beechcraft Starship eventually. Uh, the cockpit will have to wait though, let me just do the blender part first. And make it look spiffy. So yeah, I'll link the tutorials that I watched in the video description. And maybe you guys can have a try for yourself. Anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.